Welcome to Electrum Online. Just a few days ago, they showed us a photograph of Sagittarius A. Now, Sagittarius A is that humongous black hole at the center of our galaxy. And with the latest measurements, we now understand that the mass of that black hole is equivalent to about 4 million masses of the uh, equivalent of 4.3, I should say, 4.3 times the mass of the sun. 4.3 million times the mass of our sun. With other words, that black hole has swallowed up millions upon millions of stars and grow to its current size. But black holes in themselves, even though they're humongously massive, they're actually very tiny in size. For every solar mass, the radius to the Schwarzschild radius, which is the radius or the what we call the event horizon, where light cannot escape once you're inside that region, well, the distance to that edge of the event horizon is roughly about 3 kilometers or like 2.8 kilometers for every solar mass. So I did a quick calculation, 2.8 kilometers, 4.3 million times the mass of the sun, which means that the radius is 12 million kilometers. Well, that is smaller than the distance from the sun to Mercury. So it's actually a very small object. But then around it, we have the accretion disk, and if the black hole is active, meaning it is swallowing up material like hydrogen and helium that might be in the region around it, and potentially a star once in a while, or a piece of a star, well, that creates what we call around it an accretion disk, where the gases are heated to very high temperatures and they begin to glow. And that is the part of the black hole that you are able to see. The black hole itself, of course, does not give off any radiation or light, so you can't see that, but the accretion disk around it can be visible. But then in itself, it's not a lot bigger than the diameter or the radius of the Schwarzschild or of the event horizon. So, the radius of the accretion disk is about 32 million kilometers, so it's about three times the radius out to the Schwarzschild radius. And again, that is actually a very small object. You're looking for something that's smaller than the solar system, and it's located at the very center of our galaxy. The center of our galaxy is about 28,000 light years away from us. In other words, it takes light at the enormous speed of 300,000 kilometers every second, it takes light 28,000 years to reach us from the center of the galaxy. Imagine 28,000 years where every single second it travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, which is 186,000 miles per second, and yet it takes that long to get here. So it's very far away. So I did another quick calculation, and um, a light year, a light year is about 10 trillion kilometers, and the distance is 28,000 light years, so when we multiply these two together, we get two, let's see, where are we here? Well, I, I guess I didn't work that out, but let me work it out, because I didn't do it. 10 e to the 12 times 28,000, and so that's 2.8 times 10 to the 17 kilometers. So let's write that down. So 2.8 times 10 to the 17 kilometers. And so 10 to the 12th is trillion, so it would be 280,000 trillion kilometers. That's an enormous distance, so that black hole is enormously far away, 280,000 trillion kilometers away. So how big an object is that relative to us? How far away? So what we can then do is go ahead and calculate what we call the angle of resolution and the calculation we normally do for the angle of resolution is 1.22 times the wavelength we're observing divided by the diameter of the array by which we look at it and normally a telescope is not capable of doing that telescope is simply not big enough to be able to resolve something that small that far away we're looking for an angle and i calculated here of two times 10 to the minus 8 degrees, or 74 micro arc seconds. It is so tiny that a typical telescope has no chance of seeing it. So how did they manage to see that? How did they manage to record and give us a picture of that black hole? As a matter of fact, here it is. There's the picture of the black hole. And so what they did was they used an array of radio telescopes that were spread out over vast region of the world. It was spread out over Let's see, six different, uh, actually five different countries. 
So they were located, two of them were located in Chile, one was located in Arizona, one in Hawaii, one in Spain, one in Mexico, and one in the Antarctic. So together, those seven telescopes pointed to the center of the Milky Way galaxy and recorded the radiation coming from that region, that very tiny region there. And of course, they used radio telescopes because they have to be able to see through all the dust and everything that gets in the way. Otherwise, with vis visible telescopes, you won't be able to see that. And they used very small, sub, what we call sub-millimeter waves. I think it was about 0.1 millimeter waves, so very tiny waves, more in the microwave range. And they were able to then take the data. Now, it took an enormous amount of data, so they collected the data over a period of time from these various telescopes and they used the technique called the VLBI which is what we call the very long baseline interferometry. So when you look at something with multiple telescopes at the same time they all act as if it was a single telescope with a diameter from the one end of the array to the other end of the array. And so the bigger you make this D at the denominator that's the diameter of the telescope array that you use and since they were thousands of miles apart you got a very small resolution, resolution angle, small enough to detect something of this size. And they were able to do that. Now they collected an enormous amount of data. I think the number was a thousand terabytes of data. It took a very long time to crunch through all that data. It took them years. It actually took some time to get the data from the Antarctic. It was so much that they had to wait for the summer to arrive so they could actually transport the data via plane back to where they did the analysis. They spent years and years and years crunching the data of those seven telescopes and eventually they resulted in this amazing picture. A picture of the black hole at the center of our galaxy. And even though it's enormous in size from a mass perspective, more than four million times the mass of the sun, diameter wise, it's smaller than the distance from the earth to the sun. And so that small region in space 28,000 light, light years away, we're actually able to take that photograph and see for the first time what the black hole in the center of our galaxy actually looks like. Can you believe it? Why does it look so fuzzy? <laughs> well, it looks fuzzy because it's still, they had to magnify the, the image to the point where you don't see sharp boundaries. So it's still, even though they were able to take the picture, the resolution, of course, could be better. But in order to do that, they would have to put telescopes out in space to even further the diameter of the array so that you get a smaller resolution angle and a better resolution picture. So yes, it is a little fuzzy, but we went as far as we could apart so we have these telescopes that at the same moment in time could take the same image and then they could integrate the information to all the telescopes together. That's the best we can do with earthbound telescopes. But I know that one day we'll have space-based telescopes like that and they'll be able to take even more higher resolution pictures. More higher, hmm, higher resolution pictures. So is that the black hole or is that what it's called the whatever cushion disk? So, the center right here, now notice that it's of course spherical in shape, so we're looking through the accretion disk from the side, but here we're looking at edge on, and edge on you get much more of the accretion disk, so this will be a lot brighter. Here you see a little bit of it, but you can then see beyond it where you don't see any information coming from it because inside of it is the actual black hole, it's the actual region where you have what we call the the event horizon, anything inside of event horizon does not radiate energy, so that's where we have the black hole. It's right in here, and then the accretion disk of four covers it all the way around as a sphere. So is it disk or a sphere? So it's a sphere. So the, the accretion disk is a sphere, and so is the black hole. So it's a big accretion disk sphere over the black hole itself. Why do you call it disk or a sphere? Um, well, that's, a, that's an interesting um, question. I guess the reason why they call it a disk because it will appear as a disk the way you look at it, where it's actually a sphere. So if they want to be proper, they probably should have called it a Cretan sphere. Is that actually a good observation? So where does the event horizon start? So the event horizon will, you can kind of see the dark area right here. So it's probably 
like here they have a kind of a, a dotted circle so they blew with the picture here where you see the dotted circle that is what we call the event horizon and inside of there is where you see the actual black hole but you're not, you can't see the black hole because you can't see it but you can see it because of the darkness <laughs> so you can see it because the lack of light allows you to see so the if, black if hole and that is the key. So the reason why we don't typically see black holes is because most black holes that are around, there's probably thousands of black holes in our galaxy, and the reason why you can't see them directly is because if they don't have an accretion disk, they're simply not visible. They're simply just a dark dot moving around space, and of course you can't see a dark dot against black space. It can't be seen. So most black holes are invisible to us. And the only reason why we know they're there is if there's another object that actually circles around it. And so they were also able to measure the movement of stars around the black hole and measuring the radius and the velocity of those stars. And based upon the radius and the velocity of the stars moving around the black hole, they were able to determine the approximate mass, which now has gone up to about 4.3 million solar masses. The initial estimates that we had for the black hole was about one and a half million, based upon what they could see back then. But now with refined information, it's now an estimate of 4.3 million times the mass of the sun. So most black holes do not have an accretion disk? Most of the smaller black holes do not have an accretion disk. And the supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies, because many galaxies have supermassive black holes. And lately, not too many of those have accretion disks. They have become what we call dormant, like a dormant volcano. Unless something comes nearby that they can grab and swallow up, so to speak, and tear apart and, and turn into an accretion disk, the black holes will not be visible. So the supermassive black holes, like the one we have at our, the center of our galaxy, in the past were much more active when the universe first was formed. So this would call semi-active. It, it, uh, it isn't in the process of swallowing up stars as far as we can tell, but it has enough material around it that's being pulled in and superheated by the gravitational action that it's, it's somewhat active and we do see an accretion disk around it. And if you remember right, it wasn't that long ago, about a year or two ago, that they were able to take pictures of the central black hole in M87, one of the nearby galaxies, and uh, they also had a similar kind of picture as this. So, yeah, they, so I would think that um, if there's enough material nearby the black hole, you would see the accretion disk. Good questions.